Welcome back, everybody. Joining us this morning to talk about some of the big issues today is our friend Congressman Lloyd Doggett. Uh, he's back on weekend day break. Welcome, sir. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, for Jenny. Joining Enjoyed being again. with you. Every time you come, there's always something going on, weather-wise, or there's a marathon. So we really appreciate you being here. Okay, so you're holding a town hall meeting today. Yes, today at noon. It's open to anyone in the area. Uh, it will be on the campus of Houston Tillotson University. I did one yesterday. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I learn a lot from these. It's not only about me talking to people about all that's happening in Washington, but listening to them about their concerns. Sure, and you guys are about to uh, uh, vote on a the repeal of the Obamacare. That's what the rumors say. <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's such a secret plan. It's just truly really amazing. Uh, you'll remember, and many of your viewers will, when we approved the Affordable mm -hmm. Care Act, there were many protesters out there saying, read the bill, read the bill. It was, you know, many pages. Now the problem is no bill to read. Uh, it has been literally under lock and key with a police guard in the Capitol. Wow. And not only have they barred Democrats from reading it, uh, they wouldn't even let Senator Rand Paul, a Republican, get in to read the bill. So we expect that sometime late tomorrow night or the next night they will present a bill and on Wednesday morning, we will do what's called a markup. We will begin the process of amending and approving the bill. But it's being held secret, I think, not only to, to put Democrats at a disadvantage, but because they're afraid some Republicans won't like the bill either. Uh, this is the so-called... Has this happened before? I have not I don't in remember my that. memory in the decades I've been there in Congress. Further... Uh, I specifically called on them to bring someone from President Trump's administration to explain how this bill fulfills his promises. He said he wants health care for everybody, he wants it cheaper, and he wants it better than under Obamacare. If he has such a plan, I'm going to vote for it. Right. But I don't believe such a plan exists, and that's why they're keeping it secret. And maybe they don't want us uh, talking about it since, you know, well, we and <laughs> yes, because argue the normally, merits of the case. You know, these bills are complex. You don't look just to Congress, but to some of the health care experts to analyze it. And, Jenny, there's even, you know, one more amazing thing with this so-called replacement bill, and that is in the time I've been there, this is the first time that we will have major legislation and not be told how much it costs because the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office is not expected to have its estimate of the cost. So you won't know on Wednesday. Budget. Every Republican who votes for this bill will be voting for it blindly, not knowing what it costs. Wow, wow. So it's, it's a historic occasion, not a happy historic occasion, because what we need is for people to come together and look at the flaws of the Affordable Care Act and find ways to repair and strengthen it, but that's not what's happening. Well, at least give the lawmakers time to go over Exactly. It. Okay. Read the bill. No, that's that's amazing. Okay, your take on Jeff Sessions this week, you know, the Attorney General recusing himself. I think he should step aside. This is part of this should overall Should he step problem. down or just step aside? I think he should step down. I, should, I think he should never have stepped up. I'm very concerned about his record on civil rights. But having gone there and basically lied to the committee about his contact with the Russians, I don't believe he should be involved in any way in the Justice Department. Lie is a big word. Did he lie or did he kind of just uh, didn't uh, fully tell you the truth? You're right. Lie is a big word. He did not disclose the truth. I view that as a problem. What if he as, just forgot? <clears throat> well, I don't think he could forget a conversation that he had in the midst of the Republican uh, convention. You know, he said it was just as an official role, but we need to consider the context. Day by day, each day we learn a little more about this connection between the Russians and the Trump administration. I think we Democrats have been asking the wrong question, I'll have to admit. We should have asked, will anyone in the Trump administration who did not have contact with the Russians please raise their hand? <laughs> You're saying that that's a lot easier to track. That's a lot easier than way. tracking the, the little drip, drip, drip that we have been having. This is a serious national security concern. This outrage yesterday of accusing President Obama of doing something he had no power to do. We need the kind of bipartisan, independent citizens commission that we had after 9-11 to try to get to the bottom of this and restore confidence which is ebbing away every day from our government. All right, and time is ticking, and I wanted to get to some viewer questions. Sure. All right, here's one. We got an email from a viewer asking, if you support the Constitution and have been a career politician, why do you res disrespect the office of the president? You answered this a couple of visits ago, yep. but why don't well, you answer it Well, I do see respect like Pennsylvania Avenue working both ways. And when the president insults 
most everybody that disagrees with them, they're all stupid, crooked, and so forth, uh, that doesn't provide a basis for respect. I respect the office. I would like to be able to work with this administration, but every day they're engaged in another insult and another attack. On Wednesday, the president, before he gave a speech, talked to journalists off the record and said he was interested in a, a compromise on immigration reform. That could be the basis for our working together. But by nightfall, he was lying about an open border and chaos because of immigrants. Uh, that's just not a basis for respect. And a follow-up <clears throat> question is, why should viewers respect your office if they disagree with you? Well, uh, I'm sure that there are many people that disagree with my politics, though I try to do things like today's town hall and yesterday's town hall, not run away from them like some of my colleagues, right, right. in order to hear from people and try to assure my priorities are their priorities. But there's no way you can, uh, you can vote the way that every single person in the district wants it. There'll always be some disagreement. You know, that's not a bad thing. We need to have respectful disagreement in order to find the best pathway forward I just think that President Trump has taken our civic dialogue to a new low in American history. Okay, it is certainly unprecedented. It and, is unprecedented. And, Congressman, and it's unpresidential, too. <laughs> some would say. So, thank you so much for joining us. Again, your town hall is today at noon. noon. Where is it? Agree, disagree. You can come over, ask your question, offer your advice. The campus of Houston Tilton University, there will be signs there. If you don't get to make that, send me your email, get on Facebook, let me know what you think. You'll call them back. Right. There's no cardboard cutout. There's